Good morning. I have a word for you, um, 1 Timothy chapter 3. And our 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, there's some beautiful treasures in here. So in um, verse 9, it describes, this is a chapter where it describes a lot of the attributes that some of the church leaders and the elders and the bishops and the things should have, the kind of qualities that they, they're looking for. But it's, it's also a good thing for us to look to see um, what is supposed to be in our lives. So it says here, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 9, they must possess the mystic secret of the faith, Christian truth as hidden from ungodly men with a clear conscience. So the mystic secret of faith, the King James Version says, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. Okay, so we need to keep the mystery or the mystic secret, the hidden truth of godly Christian truth in a clear conscience. So it's so important for the conscience to be clear and ever clearer. Now the old idea that we had of a conscience was a clear conscience is someone didn't do something wrong, so his conscience isn't accusing him. So that's certainly part of it. So um, obviously uh, there's certain uh, works and, and deeds that's, that's not fitting for someone who um, who loves Jesus and that's that's fine, but that doesn't mean that doesn't take away the price that Jesus has paid. So yes, there's certain works that doesn't that shouldn't be there. But even if someone missed it, doesn't mean they are completely disqualified from a clear conscience. A clear conscience comes by faith, and it comes by contact with God. It comes by uh, bringing into the light um, everything that that is defiling the conscience. So, First John chapter one speaks of uh, if we dwell in the light as He is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience and keeps us cleansed. It cleanses us and keeps us cleansed. So it's a continuous cleansing. So there should be a continuous dwelling in the light. And then He says. Um, if we say we have no sin, we delude ourselves. But if we confess that we have sinned, he's, he, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And the blood cleanses us. He, he, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we, uh, we need to bring our hearts and everything that's in our hearts to Jesus and to let the light shine in there. And that cleanses the conscience. It purifies the conscience. And in fellowship with him, our consciences are ever more purified and purified and what that means is certain things that used to be okay suddenly is not okay anymore the holy spirit is 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 cleansing and cleansing the conscience and you realize but hey this thing this thing doesn't fit there my conscience doesn't allow me to do this or this or this anymore so there's there's a progressive um revealing of the christ nature inside of us and we get to know him more and more as we as we stand in fellowship with him in the light uh, as we stand uh, we gaze upon his face we look to the truth who is the person jesus christ as we look to him um, and as he's uh, as we have fellowship with him in the light and our, and we are const constantly washed in the blood of jesus um there's uh, the our vision and our hearing in the spirit becomes clearer and clearer and and our heart becomes more focused in and zoned in on knowing him and more of an awareness more of a consciousness of him and less of a consciousness of anyone else i heard a quote of bill johnson and he said um when uh, if, if your heart is not aware of the love of god it is aware of too many other things and, and there's a truth in that. Our, our consciences are so, um, are so bombarded with all kinds of things and all kinds of opinions and all kinds of ideas. Um, our hearts are so, are so bombarded with uh, everything that we've done and our own response and our own religion that's still lurking in there um, and accusation and all that kind of thing. But when the blood of Jesus is preached, when the blood of Jesus 
comes to cleanse the heart and cleanse the conscience. And we put our trust again in the blood of Jesus. The conscience is completely cleared and continuously made even more clear. And we, which causes us to be more aware of him, more aware of his love, more aware of his presence. So uh, his presence is in a different realm and we need to see and hear in that realm. And for us to see and hear properly in that realm, we need a clear conscience. And the only way we, we have a clear conscience is by the blood of Jesus, fellowship with him in the light. So um, we are uh, cleansed in the spirit the moment you, we, we get to Jesus. But in the soul dimension, there's a constant cleansing a constant cleansing a constant cleansing which is the renewal of the mind the conscience is progressively cleansed and cleansed again and cleansed again and cleansed more and more and deeper and deeper and deeper until the awareness is only him all right so it says uh, they must possess the mystic secret of faith with a clear conscience so someone who has deep fellowship with jesus uh, you can you can see it on them, and they don't really have to even say anything. You can just stand next to them and feel it. Um, I remember uh, in time spent with um, with Prophet Kubis van Rensburg, um, if if he walked into the room, you could feel it. If you stand next to him, you could feel it, and he could he would stand there. If he if he wasn't preaching, he didn't really say a lot. So he would just stand there, and you would feel the peace. You would feel the love. You would feel the presence of God manifesting. Okay, so that's an example of someone who kept uh, the mystic secret of, of God, the knowledge of God in a clear conscience. So he would forgive people. He didn't know, hold any grudges. That's something that he practiced, and we'll look at it in Acts, Acts chapter 24. Uh, but it's it's something that we need to focus on. This is This is something that you can... You can put in front of you as a goal is to know Jesus more, is to get closer to him and to get all stumbling blocks in your conscience out of the way. And the only reason, the only way to do that is by the blood of Jesus, is by fellowship with him in the light. All right. So um, I remember the one time I was up in the prayer tower, but uh, the the first one, what which was above the foyer of the church, um, and it was in between sessions at a conference, and I was just in the in the prayer tower praying between the sessions, um, and there were these windows, and you could look out over the landscape and over the, the parking area and over the property, and um, I was just praying and praying and praying, and I was looking out the far window. And suddenly, the whole atmosphere changed. And I turned around, and Prophet Kovas moved, he walked in, into the prayer tower. He, I could feel his presence, the presence of Jesus, as Prophet Kovas walked in. As I turned around, he just stood there. So uh, I could feel it. Um, and this is what I'm talking about. There's a presence and a manifestation coming to us. As we move deeper into relationship with Jesus, we need to hold the mystery of Christ. So there's a mystery that, uh, that is only revealed in the secret place. That's only revealed by living it. It's only revealed by going and seeking God. There's some mysteries that's revealed that people preach it and it can be... It is something that Prophet Kubis taught. He said, there's a mystery that can be revealed. Someone preaches it in the world and you, and you catch it in the spirit and, and everyone else starts preaching it. But then there's a mystery, which is the sons of God being made manifest, which cannot be uh, just taught. It, it needs to be kind of caught. It needs to be lived through. It needs to be manifested personally in your life. And um, there's a place where, where we um, roll on the carpet and have goosebumps, and <laughs> there's a place for that, and it's wonderful, and we laugh, and we anoint people, and, um, and, and there's a place for preaching and expounding the word, and there's a place for, for worshiping and laughing in the spirit, and um, this, it's wonderful, and to come together as saints, but there's a place where you're all alone 
we go deeper into the secret things of God, into that place, into experiences that you can only, um, dis- you, you can't describe it with words. You have to experience it to, to understand it. So it's, it's a burning fire and you go deeper into it, into the, into the unseen. A mystic secret. So you will be kept busy if your conscience is constantly worrying about everything else, if your conscience is constantly defiled about what's this guy doing, what's that guy doing, what was what I did wrong or right, or did I say this right or wrong? Oh, no, didn't I say that? Oh, oh I, I wish I didn't say that. Hey, there's a place in Christ where you, where all, where you passed all of those things, where you are only aware of Him, where you are only aware of His presence. And where all those things start to fade out. Okay. This is the place in the light in the blood of Christ. Let your heart be washed in the blood of Christ. Okay. So it says here in verse 16, 1 Timothy 3. It says, and great and important and weighty and we confess is the hidden truth. The mystic secret of godliness. He, God, was made visible in human flesh. Justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. He was seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. Okay, so this is the mystery of, of godliness. He says, great and important, weighty, we confess, is the hidden truth, the mystic secret of godliness. So this is it. He was made visible in human flesh. So there's so many scriptures that talk about it. John 1, 18, he came to make the Father known. Colossians 1, um, he is the visible uh, it's like the express image, the visible representation, same in Hebrews chapter 1. Um, so he came to show the Father. He came to demonstrate the Father. He did signs and wonders and miracles, and he, he demonstrated the character of the Father. All right. Um, made visible in human flesh, he just justified. Yeah, and also John 1, that says, he, uh, the word became flesh, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten. Okay, so he was made visible in human flesh, justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so he was justified. Um, so, which means that he was holy and blameless and just because he listened only to the Holy Spirit. And he was moved only by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Um, he demonstrated the Holy Spirit and he laid down his life and by the Holy Spirit, he took back his life justifying us. Okay. And um, vindicated by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit would testify together with him by the signs and the wonders and the miracles. Okay. So all the accusations that was falsely put against him, he was vindicated of by the Holy Spirit and power. He was seen by angels. We need to understand that God dwells in an inapproachable light. So the angels never saw what he looked like. And when when he came uh, to earth, that's why the angels just burst out in singing. So glory to God in in the heaven and peace on earth um, and towards men in whom God is well pleased. You know, when the the, um, shepherds were in the field and the angels started singing, he he was born. So for the first time, they saw him. (laughs) <laughs> they saw him in the flesh. He was seen by angels. So that's why the angels start, they freak out and they start singing and celebrating every time someone gets born again because then it's the whole thing over again. God becomes visible in the flesh once more. Preached among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up into glory. So he came on, he demonstrated was preached to the nations, believed on in the world, taken up into glory. He ascended, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And the cloud received him out of this side. Okay, taken up into glory. So that's the mystic secret of godliness. So he says, verse of chapter 4, verse 1, but the Holy Spirit distinctly, expressly declares that in latter times, some will turn away from the faith, uh, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. So there's doctrines of devils, doctrines of demons that's running rampant all across the world and and, and, and a lot in churches. Um, So some will turn away from the faith. So any doctrine that says you don't have to believe or you you mustn't believe but you must do works uh, is a doctrine of a demon. 
So verse 2 says, Through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared, cauterized, who forbid people to marry, so there's the, the legalism coming in, forbid people to marry and teach them to abstain from certain kinds of foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and have an increasingly clear knowledge of the truth. You see the increasingly clear knowledge of the truth. Okay. So uh, people speak lies in hypocrisy and it, it burns their conscience, you know, like it sears or can't cauterize their conscience. It's like, you know, when you take a hot iron and you burn flesh, it's that, that's, that's the picture that they're speaking of. It says also in the King James, uh, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their consciences seared with a hot iron. Okay, so then there's that hard bit, that dead bit that doesn't feel and it, it cannot perceive. So it's almost like um, people that receive the word and the, the calluses were removed by the circumcision of the heart. But now the conscience is seared again because people speak lies in hypocrisy. So they start teaching a certain thing and the Holy Spirit gives them a check and then they... They ignore the Holy Spirit, say, no, Holy Spirit, I will teach this. <laughs> or they start doing certain things, and the Holy Spirit tells them, don't do this. Keep your conscience clear. And then they, they, they persist in it, thinking, oh, it's grace, I can do it. Hey, it's the Holy Spirit speaking out of your conscience. You need to obey, because if we, if we disobey, it's like our consciences are seared. And, and the voice of the Holy Spirit starts fading out. The Holy Spirit is still there, but we can't hear him because our hearts get cauterized or seared as with a hot iron. So what is the antidote to that? Well, again, Hebrews chapter 4, the word is a double-edged sword, so receive the word. James chapter 1, rooted and implanted in your heart, that contains the power to save your souls. So we need our souls to be filled with the word, with the spirit, what the spirit is saying. We need our consciences to be to be clear and clearer increasingly so that we um, so that the fellowship that we have with him increases and not decreases what you feel is important uh, the reality of what you experience with him is important yes we have been washed and we've been made holy in spirit uh, the moment we got born again <clears throat> but uh, in reality, you need to experience it, and you need to experience it more. And Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 says that we, uh, we uh, are transformed by the renewal of the mind. So uh, we, if, when the Holy Spirit speaks, we need to listen. And we can't stay with certain ideas um, just because we're used to it. And if the Holy Spirit speaks, we need to let, let certain things go. And we need to embrace him and move deeper into this relationship with him. So if he clears your conscience even more and um, he speaks to you, listen and obey. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to go to Second Peter chapter 1. He says here... Um, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received like precious faith with ourselves in and through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. My, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the full personal, precise and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. So the more our intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ increases, the more the grace and peace is multiplied to us. So grace is not just some sticker you slap onto your lifestyle and now, now it's by grace. No. Grace is the ability of God and the presence, the help of the Holy Spirit um, to empower you to do what you're doing. And the, the Holy Spirit is not going to empower something that is essentially against himself. So we need the empowerment of God to walk close to him. We need the knowledge of God and the intimate fellowship with God. And we need to draw ever closer to him. And then that uh, the mystery uh, becomes manifest and, and present in our lives. And people start seeing Christ in us. And it's not just a knowledge thing. So verse 6 says, For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. So his divine power gives us this mystic secret. We hold this secret 
um, of God, the, the revealed truth of Christ uh, in a clear conscience. It says here, he has given us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence. So it's calling towards him, drawing us into himself. It's the knowledge of him. Verse 4, by means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceeding great promises. So do you want the promises of God fulfilled in your life? Then walk ever closer to him. Get a knowledge of God. Um, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and sin not, for some of you have not the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. So there are, there are certain of us in, in the... Um, the ecclesia or the church, which need to awaken to the consciousness or the awareness of his presence. There's some people who are, who are even saved who have no fellowship with Jesus. And it is our privilege and it's our purpose to preach and to help people to step into that deeper place of fellowship with him. And if you have no fellowship, to start experiencing some fellowship. And it's happening through the preaching of the blood of Jesus. It's happening through the cleansing of the conscience, through the blood of Jesus dwelling in the light, which is him, the truth. By means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious, exceeding great promises. So the promises come, the fulfillment of it as we walk in the knowledge of God. Okay, so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness, and corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust, and greed, and become sharers and partakers of the divine nature. There we go. We want to be partakers of the divine nature. Okay, he says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, um, and beside this, okay, let me read the whole verse 4 in the King James. He says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So, which means that uh, through the promises and through the knowledge of God, you can actually escape the lust of the world. You can actually escape. It says in the Amplified, as if by flight. And the, and the word says, flee from immorality. Flee from, from these things. You can escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness that is in the world um, and become sharers of the divine nature. So my greatest desire is to be a sharer of the divine nature. He has given his nature to us, but it's time for us to manifest it and it's time for us to experience it. Um, it's not it's not good enough to just say, oh, we have it. Oh, we have grace. Oh, we have the Holy Spirit. Okay, but let's manifest it. Let's experience it. Let's show the world that we have grace. Let's show the world that we have the divine nature. Uh, because that w when the world sees the fruit, they will rush in. Okay. Okay, then it says, for this very reason, and adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ your every effort in exercising your faith. It says so in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy. Okay, so faith causes things to start manifesting. Okay, so there's an energy or a power released. And in exercising virtue, develop knowledge and intelligence. So if you exercise what's flowing, virtue means something that's flowing out. If you exercise the stuff that's flowing out of you because um, of, of the faith, um, develop knowledge. You know how the stuff works. You develop in intelligence in the mysteries of God. Verse 6, and in exercising knowledge, develop self-control. So as you get more, more, more of the knowledge of God, uh, he has given us not a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That sound mind in different translations, also in the Afrikaans, is self-control. So uh, we, we're supposed to have control over the flesh. The flesh is not supposed to control us. And in exercising self-control, develop steadfastness, patience, and, and endurance. And in exercising steadfastness, develop godly piety. 
So these are all things that happen through time and through, through us seeking God uh, on purpose. All right. So uh, and it doesn't take away anything of what he's done for us. But it is like almost like a miner that's, that goes down into the dark places of the earth to, to retrieve the precious treasures that are underneath and bring it to the light. Okay, so you, you go, you, you have fellowship, you seek him out, and you, you see all kinds of things in the unseen so that you can manifest it in the scene. It's already there, it's already given to you, uh, but it needs to manifest. And it will only manifest through this relationship with Jesus. Verse 7, and in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection. And in exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian love. So all these things are connected. So as we, as we give our attention to knowing God, there's certain things that will start flowing out of it. And as we start practicing the gifts flowing out of us, as, as we start practicing the virtues of Christ starting flowing out of us on purpose, um, it will lead to other things being activated and flowing out of us also. All right, and it's all by the Holy Spirit, and it's all by His grace. Uh, but your, your attention is needed for those things to manifest. So verse 8 says, For as these qualities are yours, so it's already yours, it's already given. As these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, they will keep you from being idle and unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, so we don't want to be idle. We don't want to be unfruitful. So these qualities are good. So we can give our attention to whatever the Spirit is doing, or we can worry about everything that we are doing or what everyone else is doing. We can be, be fully focused on knowing Jesus and knowing Him more, and He's revealing all kinds of things to us, or we can be distracted by uh, all the other stuff on the surface. All right. Now it says, whoever lacks these qualities is blind, spiritually short-sighted, seeing only what is near to him. So what he's experiencing now in the now season. So, so it's, it's like your conscience is still accusing you or you still feel guilty about this. or you still. So um, there's a blindness that comes by being aware of, of the accusation and has become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. So I want to remind you that you were cleansed of your old sins. Let all those accusations, all those things in your conscience that want to accuse you, let it be washed away by the blood of Jesus. Let your heart be uh, refreshed and renewed and cleansed. I pray um, that you will, you will, uh, really experience that uh, cleansing and that, that you will understand how clean you already are in Christ, okay? That uh, you will see what he has already done for you, okay? So it's, it's about manifesting what is already true in the Spirit. Okay, so Acts chapter 23. Um, I want to uh, want to just show you something in the life of Paul the Apostle. He says, Paul, gazing earnestly at the council, the Sanhedrin said, Brethren, I have lived before God doing my duty with a perfectly good conscience until this very day as a citizen and a true loyal Jew. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those who stood near him to strike him on the mouth. So the religious people will be very offended at us testifying of a clear conscience because they would say, how can you say that you're better than us? Okay, because they, they, they actually think they're better. But um, when you start testifying of a clear conscience, you will lose favor with religious types. Okay, so uh, the moment he started saying, my conscience, I've been serving God with a clear conscience. The high priest, the, the head of all of these religious guys, they ordered him to be struck on the mouth. It's offensive to people who have no clear conscience when you testify of a clear conscience. Okay, But testify of it anyway. <clears throat> but be sure to make known to them how their consciences can be cleansed. And their consciences can be cleansed by faith in Jesus, by coming to him in relationship, 
standing with Him in the light and ha having your heart consistently, constantly cleansed by the blood of Jesus, your conscience cleansed. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13 and 14, the blood of Jesus cleanses our consciences from dead works and lifeless observances. So I think it's also offensive to the religious types because if my conscience has been cleansed, it leaves no room anymore for religious activities because I already have fellowship with God. And I think that's what's so offensive to them. Hebrews chapter 7 um, says the Lord never made anything perfect. So, so we, will, we will not get to a point where the legalistic actions and the, the sacrifices actually bring a clear conscience. So that was what they were looking for all the time. Now the blood of Jesus is revealing this, the cleansing of the conscience. But they, they struggle to take it because it means it, it draws a line through their whole life and all the knowledge that they have and all the importance that they have before people. Okay, so Acts chapter 24, it says, um, verse 14, it says, But this I confess to you, however, that in accordance with the way of the Lord, uh, the Christianity was called the way, which they call a heretical division-producing sect. So they will say that you're a sect. They will say that you are division-producing if you're really standing in the truth. I worship or serve God, or the God of our fathers, still persuaded of the truth and believing in and placing full confidence in everything laid down in the law and written in the prophets. Why can you say that? Because the law and the prophets testifies about Jesus and the fulfillment um, came through Jesus Christ. Okay, so we can, we can say that. Verse 15 says, having the same hope, in God, which these themselves hold and look for, um, speaking to, to the people in the Jewish tradition, that there is to be a resurrection both of the righteous and the unrighteous, the just and the unjust. Verse 16, therefore, I always exercise and discipline myself, mortifying my body, deadening my carnal affections, my bodily appetites, and worldly desires, Endeavoring in all respects to have a clear, unshaken, blameless conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. So in the Amplified, the, he calls it mortifying the body. Like in Colossians chapter 3, he says, and also speaking of a mystery being revealed, he says, um, verse 1, if, uh, if then you have been risen with Christ, aim at and seek the things which are above where Christ is seated and not on the stuff that's on the earth. And then he says in verse 2, um, uh, he says, for your, you, as far as this world is concerned, you have died. And your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. And then he says in, in verse 4, when Christ shall appear, you will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Okay, so we seek him. Your new real life is hidden with him in God. It's a hidden mystery. So if you really want to live your real life, you need to go into that mystery. You need to reveal and bring it out for yourself. You need to experience it for yourself. You need to go into that place of, of, of unseen, that secret place, and hold the mystery of Christ revealed to you in a clear conscience. Okay, so he says, uh, when, and then when Christ appears, you will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So he appears through your life. You, you are hidden with him, and he appears in you. So people start seeing things of the unseen. A, an, an unseen glory start to appear on your life, and you look different, but they can't put their finger on it. And you carry something, they can't really describe it. They stand next to you and they start shaking, but they don't really know why. They sit in the seat that you just sat in and suddenly they start shaking and they don't, they don't understand why. It's a mystery that's being manifested. It's something that the world will not understand. Okay, so, um, so we need to, to go for those things. Okay, we need to really get our attention off of sin. 
uh, we really need to trust that the blood of Jesus has already paid the price for sin and completely taken it out of the way for us. So stop putting your attention on sin, trying to overcome your sin because it will only cause temptation and it will cause you to sin again. That's your awareness, so that's what you're going to do. Rather, take your attention away from it and put your attention on the light on Jesus, on knowing him. Trusting that your sins are already forgiven. Okay. Bring your heart to him. Let the light shine in. And let all the, the stuff that's accusing your conscience just be taken out and destroyed by the light. Let the blood of Jesus just cleanse you. Let the, the mercy of God, the message of his blood, the message of his forgiveness wash over you. Uh, Ephesians 5, the washing of the water by the word. And you have a cleansed conscience and an increasingly clean conscience so you go into the deeper things and then he says uh, colossians chapter 3 verse 5 he says so kill the evil desires lurking in your members so he says in acts chapter 24 he says i always exercise and discipline myself mortifying my body deadening my carnal affections how does he do it by being focused on the glory by going into the secret place my new real life is hidden with christ in god and when christ appears um i will appear with him in the splendor of his glory so if i'm focused on knowing jesus then jesus is manifesting through me and um, there's not even an awareness of the sin because the conscience has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. All right. So um, we mortify our body, but we, uh, we do it by being focused on the blood of Jesus. Deadening the carnal affections by turning away from it and entering into that place where we are aware of God. Um, bodily appetites, worldly desires, endeavoring in all respects to have a clear, unshaken conscience void of offense toward God and a man. So we need to get rid of offenses. If someone has offended you, get rid of it because it will, it will uh, destroy your life. It will uh, cause your, your conscience um, to, to, uh, to be aware of things that is not of God. And it will, it will cause you to not not see and hear properly the law and judgment of the law uh, covers but the anointing reveals so if you want to see we need to focus on the anointing we need to look in the face of jesus christ uh, so we need to look away from all the distractions so offense is a distraction offense is judgment offense is law if i'm offended with someone but i'm preaching grace i'm mixing law with grace so i need the offense that's in my heart towards other people I need to get that offense out of the way. How do I do that? The light of God, the blood of Jesus, looking into his face, being transformed into his very own image, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. So I behold him and I'm transformed. So Jesus is not offended. So if I behold him, I will not be offended. Um, he, uh, he, he even said, forgive them, they don't know what they do. All these people that crucified him, that drove the nails through his hands and through his feet, he, he, feet, he forgave them. So um, we need to get this. <laughs> Offense is not your friend. Offense uh, will uh, cauterize your conscience. It's speaking lies um, in hypocrisy searing your own conscience okay so don't keep grudges don't hold grudges forgive people forgive people even if even if you are right forgive them even if they are right forgive them doesn't matter who's right it what matters is that we look to jesus and if something is a stumbling block for you looking to jesus it's a problem you need to get those things out of the way Okay, so forgive people, don't walk in offense, don't be uh, actively causing offenses towards people. But somewhere, someone will cause offense, don't take it. Just because someone gives the offense, don't take it, just dismiss it and go on. Um, just forget it and go on, forget it, like it doesn't even get burned into your memory, let it just... Let it just go. The blood of Jesus removes other people's offenses and it removes my offenses. I want my conscience to be void of offense. I don't want to, their offenses or my offenses to be in my awareness. I don't want to walk around with judgment towards you. I don't want to walk around with judgment towards me. So the law kills.
but the Spirit makes alive. So we want the Spirit of God. We want to know the Spirit of God. We want the mystery of godliness. We want to know Him. And through the precious promises of God, we want to become partakers of the divine nature. So uh, He has put His nature in you by giving you His Holy Spirit. So let His Holy Spirit be all in all. Let His Holy Spirit take control of everything that you think and do and say. Let the Holy Spirit guide you in, in your awareness. Okay. So uh, I pray that, that this message would, uh, you know, have, has done something for you. May you may you just increasingly walk in a greater awareness of Jesus. May your fellowship with Jesus Christ increase and may your heart just burn with the glory of God, with the mystery of godliness that's being revealed to the world through you. And even like Ephesians chapter 3 says, uh, like the wisdom, many-sided wisdom of God being revealed to the angelic principalities and powers. Okay, so... Uh, May you just walk in God's glory. May you possess the mystery of Christ, the mystic secret of Christian truth in a clear conscience. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, it's good to see all of you here. And uh, so I want to ask you something. Please, please like and share uh, this message so that more people can see it. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and also share it on your favorite social media platform so that more and more people can see these videos. All right, so bless you. It's good to be with you. It's good to spend some time with you. And I pray that the word would bless you and, and give you just something uh, that you, so that you can experience Jesus more. All right, amen. We'll see you again.